Hello brain lovers, Gregory here from the Brain Academy and today we're going to speak about some of my favorite books about the brain. Books, books, oh, I love books. I read all the time, you know, to learn more about the brain, but also to find some new research just to get general knowledge. And so when I look at my books, it's like I'm meeting old friends and uh, it makes me nostalgic. Some of them I've hated, some of them I were, yeah, okay, good. But some of them were just fantastic. I just wanted to share with you the ones that hit home for me. So it all started with, of course, the one and only Daniel Kahneman. Daniel Kahneman, for those who don't know it, well, he won a Nobel Prize. So that says a lot about his capacity to talk about this subject. So Daniel Kahneman wrote this book, Thinking Fast and Slow. Thinking Fast and Slow was for me the revelation. real revelation about the brain. I was back in those days totally immersed in the neurocognitive and behavioral approach of which I talk a lot about in my courses. I've got some courses that are only dedicated on that. Once I read Daniel Kahneman that a whole new world went open. Now this is not really stuff for beginners. However, if you already have quite some background about the brain and you want to go to the next level, thinking fast and slow, it's really well explained and it makes so much sense. So yeah. Second one, well, I just said that Kahneman is probably not for people who start. This one on the other hand, Social Animal from David Brooks, this one will be for anybody who's interested in just a good read because this is actually the only book about the brain that was able to make me cry. Really, I cried. I didn't <laughs> I'm not going to tell you why, of course, I'm not going to give it away. That wouldn't be fair. So don't worry, there are no spoiler alerts here. Social Animal talks about how we are social beings and it talks a lot about the brain. It follows the story of two people from the birth until their old age. And it's very human, it's very warm and you really get attached to these people and certain things happen in their life. And then he explains scientifically with studies, etc., the why and how. It's really, really well done. Now, what's happening with this book is that David Brooks is not a scientist. He, he's a journalist who just loves brain science and wrote a brilliant book about it. That's the thing, you know, so many scientists, they're good at being scientists, but they're not communicators. There are three primary theories concerning sediment flow rate. Each of these theories can be further subcategorized into two oh, this distinct... this is it. This is what's going to kill me. That's why people like David Brooks do a marvelous job and a very important job to make all this accessible and, and enjoyable for common people, <laughs> people like you and I. You know by now that one of my specialties and my favorite topics is neuroplasticity. The Brain That Changed Itself from Dorman Deutsch is a must read, an absolute must read when it comes to neuroplasticity. So the very interesting thing about this book is that you get 10 different stories, 10 stories about people who had some issues with their brain, sometimes after a stroke or brain damage somehow, or sometimes they were just born this way. And this book tells their story and how they overcame against all odds the challenges they were facing. Oh, behave, you're in for a treat. See all this? The more there are of those, that means the more notes I took. <laughs> behave from Robert Sapolsky. Remember what I said about scientists who aren't able to write? Well, they're able to write, but not in a fun, entertaining way. With Robert Sapolsky, forget about that. This guy is brilliant, he's funny, but he talks about very complex matters, about the brain, it's really advanced stuff. However, it's well-written, it's fun, it's entertaining, and the guy is epic. If you've ever seen a picture of his, he has this huge beard and he looks like, I mean, he's like bigger than life. It's definitely one of my favorite books, as you can see. This one is from Gina Rippon. Gendered Brain is a book about basically the whole controversy about male brain and female brain. You know, there have been books about it and so much brain myths about brains, some brains being more male or female. In the end, the whole Mars and Venus thing just goes on and on. And there have been books written about it that I definitely would not recommend that were just 
so wrong on so many levels. If you want a definite answer about what it is about brains that make you male or female. Do you want to know what it is? And the influence of context and culture. Go into this book, The Gendered Brain from Gina Ripper. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. It's not easy literature because it's very serious. It goes really into facts, tak, 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 study after study. It goes debunking all the other studies that people refer to that are just not right. Why We Sleep from Matt Walker. Matt Walker explains in detail the reasons why we should sleep and why we should really care about our sleep. For me and in, in my courses as well, I explain how sleep is really the ultimate cornerstone about the brain. When I give conferences, every single time I say the same thing. If there's only one thing, only one thing that you remember about today, about the conference that I just gave to you, please let it be to sleep enough. Sleep is so important. I want to do all those things you talked about. You'd better go back to your bed. And Matt Walker is really good at explaining why in detail, the consequences, long term, short term, and what's happening in our brain during our sleep. So um, if you're interested about your brain and sleep, you definitely should read this one. By the way, after reading this book, it gave me an idea as well to write a course about sleep and dreams, but that's for later this year. Last but not least is actually not really a book about the brain, but about human evolution. Sapiens from uh, Yuval Noah Harari. This guy writes uh, fascinating books. It's really a book that uh, was not so much entertaining as it was eye-opening. Joey! Let's make some wake-up juice. And he really goes and look into history, basically the last 100,000 years of our species, and looks at it from a perspective that I haven't really looked or heard before. Sapiens is a really interesting read. Brief history, well, brief. <laughs> Everything is relative, of course. But a brief history of humankind will have you look at our species from a different perspective. So in this book is not really about the brain, but it's really about us humans. So that's it, seven books about the brain that I really enjoyed and that I recommend. You will find the links downstairs in the description. So if you're interested in, in checking it out for yourself, just follow them and you'll get to Amazon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We have new episodes of this vlog coming every single week. Check out some other episodes. And if you want real stuff, go to brainacademy.com. Join our 200,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen.